today i'm going to be going over everything that you need to know if you're a brand new player in rise of kingdoms or if you haven't played in a long time and you're just getting back into it what's going on guys cheers it's summer of 2022 and a lot of players are joining rise of kingdoms right now and i haven't made an updated beginner's guide in a while so let's get right into it now really quick if this is the first rise of kingdoms video of mine that you're watching i am a player of over 1306 days that's right i've played this game every single day for over three and a half years and i've been making consistent content for rise of kingdoms since 2020. so i'm gonna try to give you guys as much information as i can that i've learned in the last three and a half years in this one video which means it might be a little bit long but don't worry there's going to be chapters so you can skip to the point of video that you actually care about and if there's a topic that you want to learn more about I've probably already covered it in a video so make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new here and if it's something that I haven't covered before make sure you comment it down below now the first thing I want to cover really quickly is what should your goals be as a new player in rise of kingdoms well the whole point of the game is to build your city up to maximum level which is city hall 25 construct a massive army of infantry cavalry and archer units and collect powerful legendary commanders to bring those armies into battle against other players in different servers in rise of kingdoms large scale pvp happens in events known as kvks or kingdom versus kingdoms and as you can see here i'm in one right now it lasts for the next 48 days it just began so these are large and long battles and they're incredibly fun if you're playing with the right people now since the server or kingdom that you play in plays such a big role in your rise of kingdoms experience it's important to pick a good kingdom to play the game in and what I recommend to do as a beginner in the game for the best kingdom or server to join is whatever is the newest kingdom at that time so right now at the recording of this video the two is two newest kingdoms are 2818 and 2819 and the reason that the newest kingdom introduced is the best to join as a new player is for a few reasons the first is that joining a brand new kingdom gives you the rise of kingdoms event this event only comes around once at the beginning of a brand new kingdom and it's very important for new players because it gives you a ton of free speed ups resources and a bunch of things that you need to start the game with a small advantage it lasts a couple of days and after it's gone it's over but again it's very important to maximize the rewards that you get from that event and then a few days after that event there is another event that comes around called lohar's trial now this event does come around periodically in the future but it's important to have this event at the beginning of the game because this is how you're going to unlock an epic commander known as lohar and it's the only way to unlock him in the game now lohar is actually horrible when it comes to fighting other players in the game but he's incredibly important for killing barbarians in the open field and he's one of the most important commanders in the beginning of the game because his third skill gives you 70 percent more experience so by getting lohar right at the beginning of the game you're going to be able to level up all of your other future commanders a little bit faster now after you take advantage of the rise of kingdoms event and all of the new bonuses that you get by joining a new kingdom you can always transfer to another server later in the game by using items called passport pages now the number of pages you need to migrate to another kingdom depends on your power level but for most players in the early game it is extremely cheap and easy to move to a new kingdom because it's only going to require one two maybe three passport pages and you can get these pages for free from your alliance shop you can see in here and we'll talk more about alliances in a moment but you can get them by exchanging alliance credits I believe it's 600,000 alliance credits for a single page or if you need a ton of these passport pages you can purchase them directly from the shop in the new world bundle however I will note that most players probably won't have to buy this bundle until much 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 later into the game and it's definitely not a requirement now I know some of you are probably thinking okay well if I want to move to a new kingdom just to tell me which kingdom I should move to what's the best server in the game right now and that's not really how it works in rise of kingdoms uh the top 30 kingdoms by power are known as Imperium kingdoms and there are usually a, a lot of restrictions on how many players can go to those kingdoms and that's to just prevent the game from being way too lopsided towards one or two kingdoms now I could talk all day about like whether or not you should leave your home kingdom your home server and what makes another kingdom or server a good one to go to but a good rule of thumb is that if your home kingdom is having a lot of civil wars meaning that leadership is not coercive and there's not a really good 
plan moving forward people are constantly fighting that's going to make competing in kingdom versus kingdom a lot harder because you guys are already fighting amongst yourselves and if that can't be resolved then you probably want to move to another kingdom where leadership is strong and things are organized now once you've created a character in the newest server next thing you're going to do is pick your civilization and this is a big choice this is sort of like the charmander squirtle or bulbasaur moment at the beginning of pokemon it's which civilization should you pick as a brand new player which one is meta which one is the best which one gives you the best commander now i'm not going to go into detail about when you would pick each specific civilization because for new players it's pretty simple one keep in mind that these civilizations are more of a micro optimization and they're not that important in the early game it's not going to make or break your progress if you pick rome over china because around city hall 10 to 12 you get a free civilization change item which will let you pick a new civilization for free so you don't have to worry about if you picked the wrong civilization but as a beginner i would say the best civilization to pick would either be france britain or germany with china coming in at a close fourth the reason that these stand above the others for new players is because when you pick a civilization your main quests will periodically give you sculptures of the featured commander so for france you get joan of arc and she is going to be very very good in the early game not only because she's just in general one of the most supportive and best epic commanders in the entire game but also because she gives you 25 percent gathering speed and 25 percent load bonus and gathering in the early game is going to be extremely important for new players because you're going to need a lot of resources especially stone to upgrade your wall your city hall your tavern having joan of arc at the very beginning is really going to help you now the reason you might choose Britain over France is because Boudicca does give you bonus experience when fighting barbarians in the open field which again at the beginning of the game similar to having Lohar is going to help you level up your other commanders and that's very very valuable in the early game now the reason that Germany is a contender here is actually not because of Herman the commander he's actually not that great Germany gives you 10 percent action point recovery which is extremely useful especially as a new player and a free-to-play player plus you get some troop training speed and finally China is because Sun Tzu is the best PvP epic commander in the game at the time of recording this and for those of you who don't know PvP is player versus player my recommendation for free to play players is start as either France or Britain my preference is France and then later around City Hall 10 or 12 switch to Germany so that way you get the bonus action point recovery after you switch you're still going to be gaining the sculptures for the commander that you started with that's why it says starting commander will not be affected one last thing to mention about civilizations is that when you join Rise of Kingdoms there's probably going to be a new civilization called Egypt and at the time of recording this we know that civilization is coming into the game but we don't know the buffs for that civilization so I can't say definitively if that civilization will be on par with some of the other ones that I've discussed here but what I can say is that Joan of Arc is definitely a better starting commander than the commander you start with for Egypt okay now that you've picked your civilization and you're just starting the game what are some of the early game goals that you should be focusing on the very first thing that you want to do in rise of kingdoms is join the best possible alliance the strongest and most active alliance that you can find in your kingdom being a part of an alliance is what keeps people playing rise of kingdoms the community of this game is actually very strong people like to talk in the world chat and that sense of community is really what has made this game so popular but not only that there are so many benefits of playing in an active and powerful alliance arguably the most important part is that you get alliance technology and some of the technology such as together we rise actually allows your alliance members to speed up the production of your buildings and your technology research for your account which means you get to speed through the early game levels a little bit faster with the help of an active alliance compared to somebody who doesn't join an alliance and just slowly levels things up over time beyond that joining an alliance allows you to rally forts in the open field which will give everybody in the alliance free gifts such as this level 11 fort trophy so you can see everything that says claimed here I got a bunch of stone action points wood and things along those lines 
for free just by being an alliance and having other people in the, in the alliance do these forts now of course it's important to also contribute to those forts once in a while and on top of that when people in the alliance make purchases you also will benefit so if you're an alliance with people who spend a lot of money then you're actually going to get a ton of benefits including free gems and speed ups you're going to get gold keys you're going to get vip points i mean look at this i get 15 hours of speed ups for free just because somebody purchased a golden chest all of the stuff that you get here is extremely important for early game development which is again why you want to join an active alliance as soon as possible oh and also as the territory expands you're going to get free resources over time which is super important next you also want to focus on your vip level in the early game specifically getting to vip 6 as soon as possible this is important because you unlock the second building queue which means you can upgrade two buildings at the same time effectively doubling the progress of your building upgrades which is extremely important because again the first thing you want to do and focus on your first main goal is getting your city hall to 25 as fast as possible now I know sometimes in other mobile games it's important to sort of level up all of your buildings around the same time at the same level so everything goes to let's say 20 and then you upgrade everything to 21 before progressing your city hall to 22. That is not the case in rise of kingdoms. You want to speed this level uh, of the city hall to 25 as fast as possible. Now there are some prerequisites. So for example, you can only upgrade your city hall if you've upgraded your wall to as high as it can go. And you can only upgrade your wall as high as it can go. If you've upgraded your tavern as high as it can go. And this requires one of your um your quarries to be leveled up as high as it can go but for the most part you can ignore a lot of the buildings in the early game and just focus on whatever you need for your city hall now let's talk about a couple of things to help you get this city hall to 25 as fast as possible the first thing that i want to mention is that you actually can have up to two characters on the same server at the same time so this is important to know because a lot of players especially free to play players will have what's known as a farm account meaning you run two accounts at the same time one is your main account where you're focusing on really powerful commanders and getting it to city hall 25. the other account which you can see here i called mini omniarch is literally just to farm materials and then send those materials to your main account so effectively you are doubling almost the amount of resource production and gathering that you have for your main city and this is going to be extremely important now we're going to talk a little bit more about which commanders you should be focusing on in rise of kingdoms as a brand new player but the first thing that i want you to focus on if you're a new player is again getting city hall to 25 and which commanders are going to be useful in doing that the answer is going to be your gathering commanders in the early game you should have as much of your experience going to your gathering commanders as possible specifically getting them to level 40. you'll see here that i have a lot of my gathering commanders at level 40. realistically you only need five commanders at level 40 because you can only have five marches in the open field in your home kingdom but the reason you want to get your gathering commanders to level 40 and then stop is because that's how many talents you need to get to the end of the gathering tree here these are talent points you get talent points for leveling up your commander and also adding new star levels to your commander and 40 is the minimum requirement to not only get all of the talents that you need from the gathering tree but also to put some points in extra bonus things such as modified axle which increases the march speed of siege units by 30 percent that just means you're going to get to and from the resource nodes on the map a little bit faster which i think is important anything beyond level 40 is sort of useless because you're never going to use gathering commanders to fight which means you never really need points in the defense tree or the integration tree or anything like that and even if your gathering commanders are sort of ambushed while they're gathering you're not going to be able to defend yourself anyway regardless of what talents you have so it's better to not waste the experience beyond 40 and just leave them there the way you're going to level up these commanders to 40 in the early game is by defeating as many barbarians as you can outside of your city you'll find them just roaming around your kingdom they spawn randomly and they vary in level you can also use the barbarian search feature to just find a nearby barbarian of a particular level keep in mind that some levels of barbarians only spawn in different zones on the map so the closer to the center of the map you are the higher the level the barbarian so if you don't see any level 25s around that's why you're probably in the wrong zone but killing these barbarians is important because not only does it give you a lot of really important things for progressing your account such as the arrows of, of resistance which you're going to need a ton of those 
to get your city hall to 25 but also because of the experience that they give you you can see this here now one thing I want you to note is how much experience the Boudicca and Matilda got here 3.6 thousand whereas my Lohar fighting the exact same Barbarian with Ethelfled got 5,000 experience so again that's a good illustration of why Lohar is so important because you get a lot more experience from killing the same thing on top of that you're going to get some training speed ups some tombs of knowledge which are basically just universal XP that you can choose who gets it even if they weren't in that fight for example my Julius Caesar I just hit the plus button here and then I have all of the tombs of knowledge that are in my inventory and I can just use these on whatever commander I want now you can't just kill barbarians all day forever there is a limit because it costs action points in order to attack a barbarian you can see here if I want to attack this level 24 with my Boudicca and Joan of Arc it's going to cost 40 action points now one of the cool things about Boudicca and Lohar is that because they have the peacekeeping tree they are designed to fight barbarians so this talent here insight reduces the uh, action points required by 10 so it actually costs less to fight barbarians with the peacekeeping commanders than for any else now these action points recover over time here you can see that it will take about eight hours for me to completely refill my action points or you can use action point recovery items that you get as you saw from destroying barbarian forts and various other methods you can get these from doing events and things like that but because there is a cap on how much you can have so for me it's 1700 action points and then at that point I will no longer be regenerating action points so in the beginning of the game it is crucial especially for free to play players to spend down your action points all the time whenever you log in when you first wake up if you turn on rise of kingdoms you're gonna have probably full action points and that's when you want to go out and fight as many barbarians as you can get this all the way down to zero before logging off okay you don't want to overfill and, and and be stuck at that cap because then you're just wasting those action points that you could be recovering and again you need to get these commanders uh especially in the early game the gatherers to level 40 as fast as possible now I do want to mention barbarian forts really quickly the reason that you want to take down barbarian forts with your alliance isn't just because of the Alliance gifts which are nice but also because they will give you a lot of experience and things that you need to progress but the most important thing that you get from barbarian forts is called books of the Covenant these are another item that you need to get your City Hall to 25 these and the arrows of resistance are both obtained primarily through PVE content or player versus environment content so doing your barbarians is going to get you the arrows of resistance doing the barbarian forts is going to get you the books of the Covenant without them you cannot get your city hall to 25 so make sure that you're spending down all of your action points as much as possible and this is the other reason why I mentioned earlier that Germany is so good for free to play players because you get 10 percent faster action point recovery now once you've spent down all your action points for the day or if you're going to log off or go to work or whatever it's important to have all of your armies gathering while you're offline now I know I'm sort of breaking that rule right now because I'm distracted making this video but you can see that I I've spent my action points down to zero and then I sent out my gatherers the importance here is that gathering takes a lot of time it takes a while to completely deplete a resource node in the open field there's never a point in time in rise of kingdoms where you shouldn't be gathering because you're always going to need those resources in the early game it's so that way you can get your buildings to 25 so that way you can research technology which requires a decent amount of gold but also beyond that in the late game um tier five units the actual units that you're going to be fighting with are extremely expensive to train they cost a lot of uh food wood stone and especially gold to train your army this is why when you log off when you have no more action points to spend uh, that's when you want to go ahead and gather as much as possible to maximize the downtime the time that you're away from the game you're still making progress by getting those resources now we've talked a lot about getting your city hall to 25 and one of the most important things when getting to that point is your academy now your academy here is going to allow you to research technology there's two different branches of technology there's economic and military and if you're a new player in the game you should primarily focus on economic technology first because there's a lot of key things here that are going to help you push your military technology even faster a couple of examples of this are masonry this is extremely important it increases your building speed by 15 percent 
so again when you get access to this you want to get this to level five as fast as possible before upgrading the other buildings because this is just free time reduction same thing with writing this technology is going to reduce the research speed of all other technologies in the future by just making sure that this is at five so you want to prioritize this as well further down the tree you have engineering and mathematics both of these are a sort of advanced versions of those further increasing your building and research speed so make sure you go ahead and do that and finally machinery is going to give you faster gathering speed carriage lets you hold more resources so as you can see there's so much stuff here and I've gone past all the other important stuff like actually just getting more food and wood and stuff within your city so all of this stuff is what's going to help you get to city hall 25 and then once you've pushed as far into the economic technology as you can then you can start to work on some of the military technology and this is where you're going to unlock the next tier of units so you get tier two units you're going to get tier three units you're going to get tier four units and so on and so forth all the way up to tier five which again are the most powerful units in the game at the time of recording this doesn't seem like that's going to change but hey it could and pushing a little bit into the military technology at the beginning of the game is good as well because you are going to need stronger units in order to push farther into the single player campaign um having higher tier units with more attack defense and health and stats along those lines is going to help you uh you know push farther and progress your account so a little bit of progress there is important but again focus on economic first now let's talk about expedition a little bit this is again the single player campaign where you go into different challenges and you get to fight the different armies set up in particular scenarios that the game presents to you if you are able to three star these missions which means meeting all of the requirements here and these requirements uh do change a little bit depending on which level you go for but when you three star a mission you actually gain all of the daily rewards for that mission every single day without having to replay that expedition so getting to three stars is important because every day you're going to get a chest full of goodies and the most important of which is going to be the medal of the conqueror these are a universal currency you can use in the expedition metal store to get some extremely important commanders for the progression of your account so you will have an epic commander here that rotates every week but i want to shift your focus to the refresh chances and Constance and Ethelflaed. Now, using these, you can see here, I have a ton saved up, but in the early game, these are gonna be very hard to come by because early levels don't give that many. Ethelflaed is a legendary commander, and the only way that you can expertise her or max her out is by getting her sculptures here in the expedition and she is especially in the early game very very good and again she is a free legendary legendaries are the most powerful commanders so the fact that you get her for free is extremely useful every player should and does use her even if you are a sort of pay to win player now late late game perhaps you phase her out but for the most part she's extremely useful and she's another peacekeeping commander which if you remember is good for killing barbarians so she's always going to be usable she's always going to be useful but before you invest in her because you can only get three of her sculptures per day and to expertise her you're going to need 690 and 10 to summon her so really 700 sculptures you can only get three of her a day and they're pretty expensive so in the early game I want to shift your focus over to Constance okay she is a blue commander and she is the most useful blue commander in the game and the reason for that is uh, because all the blue commanders are useless except for Constance okay I lied Sarka and Gaius are very useful as well but you'll notice that all three of these are gathering commanders the reason that Constance is so much more important than the other ones is one you only get her from expedition you're not going to get her from anywhere else so it's important that you get as many of her as you can the reason for that is because her three skills here you can ignore her first skill which is not the case for a majority of commanders and we're going to talk about that later but her fourth skill in particular gives you 10 percent additional resources when you finish gathering the reason that this is op this is broken this is so good and let me just point your uh your attention over to some of the legendary commanders such as sunduk okay her expertise gives her 10 percent resources uh when completing gathering so it is you need 700 legendary commander sculptures of sunduk in order to get the same benefit that you get from constance by just getting her fourth skill up to five now the reason that the 10 percent bonus is so so good in rise of kingdoms uh is for two reasons one your alliance and this is another benefit of your alliance is that they can build what's known as an alliance resource pit so here you can see we're building the mother load which is in late game the pretty much only one that you'll ever see that's because it gives you guaranteed gold um but these resource pits have so many resources in them that even though it's 
able to be collected by your entire alliance simultaneously it still will take multiple hours for you to collect the most amount of resources you can from the uh, alliance resource pit the reason that this is important is because this is where you're going to send your constants when you go to sleep when you log off for long periods of time just in general because you're going to gather more resources from this pit than you will from any single node on the map assuming that you join the pit when it first you know is planted down on the map so look at this report for example okay i gathered from the mother load 705 000 gold and my bonus was 218,000. Now there's a couple of other factors at play here, but one of the big ones, a 10% worth, is having constants in that Alliance mother load. So that bonus of 10% is going to be extremely important, which is why you want to, again, focus on pushing expedition as far as possible, because you will get heads of constants in here, but also because the metals can be used to put more sculptures into her. As a side note, all of your elite commander sculptures that are universal should be put into constants until she's maxed out. That is the best use for these because she's so much harder to get than Sarka, than Gaius, etc. The final thing I want to mention about the metal store is that you should always keep usually about 2,500 or if you can 5,000 metals in reserves and never spend them the reason for that is because sometimes when you refresh these chances here you will see a legendary commander sculpture from the gold keys so that's charles martel Cao Cao, elsa julius caesar those types of commanders can show up here for 2500 medals and because it's so rare you want to be able to buy them every single time that you see them beyond that once you finish constance obviously you want to push everything into ethel fled and you get her not only from there but also making sure you do these little side missions here um the rallying and uh, garrison missions these are going to give you daily treasures of the warrior queen which have a chance of getting, giving you ethel fled sculptures which again is extremely important for maxing her out okay next i want to just talk about a quick mistake that i see a lot of new players do and that is that they will go in and they will use these resource items before they actually need to use them what do i mean by this well i can use this item and it will immediately give me 750 gold but the game will give you a notice saying that it will exceed your storehouse protection and could be plundered if another player attacks me so the reason that they give you this notification is because and i'm victim of right now it's because when you have so many resources in your city especially at the early game where like the leadership of the kingdom isn't set in stone yet consequences for attacking other players aren't really understood yet people will scout your city and see you have a ton of resources just sitting there and while you're offline and you can't do anything about it they're going to attack your city they're going to kill your troops they're going to fill your hospital and most importantly they're going to steal your resources all the resources that you work so hard to gather in the open field will be gone if they attack you and if they're in item form um if you use them well then they're just free for somebody else's taken but if you leave them in your resource items they're just sitting here as little tokens okay these cannot be stolen okay you can use these whenever you want nobody can take these and that's why it's important to not use these unless you absolutely need to now just like the resource items you don't want to be wasting your speed up items either and in particular the universal speed ups okay these are the most important speed ups in the entire game because you can use them on anything you can use them for building for research for troop training for hospital speed anything that you can speed up you can use these for and what i'm going to recommend to you guys is that if you're a new player don't use these at all the beginning of the game don't use them to speed up your buildings or your research technology or your, especially not your troops in the early game you want to save those universal speed ups until you're able to compete in an event known as the mightiest governor this event will come around periodically every couple of weeks and it will give your kingdom the chance to unlock or gain sculptures of a particular legendary commander now you're going to be competing with other players here in these rankings and usually the people who go absolutely just well up are going to be the ones that win however if you're a free-to-play player in a relatively small or new kingdom you might have a chance if you save up the universal speed ups for a couple of months and then push all at that time the reason that you can do that in this event is because one of the stages is uh, giving you points based on the amount of power you gain in that particular day so you can speed up a ton of days worth of power gain 
in a single day by using your universal speed ups and it'll give you the chance of unlocking or gaining sculptures of a legendary commander now on the topic of events it's extremely important for new players and especially free to play players to participate in as many events as you possibly can you'll see on the event calendar that there are events going on right now events that are coming up events that have already passed and one of the things that rise of kingdoms does really well better than other games in this genre is pump out a ton of new events and things that keep the game fresh things that keep players engaged and a lot of these events give you a ton of really good things that you need to progress your account absolutely for free so for example we have the golden kingdom right now if you go through this multi-floor dungeon you're going to gain a ton of equipment materials maybe uh, even fragments of equipment pieces you're also going to get a bunch of experience some resources there's a ton of really important things you get from these events this is another event that's very common um each civilization has a, its own event and by doing specific things on the map such as spending action points or gathering um you're going to be able to get these uh, specific this is the ottoman one so it's the ottoman helmet and you can exchange them for items that you're going to need so doing these events are extremely important because again it's just free stuff that you need to progress your account especially as a free-to-play player some of the most important events to focus on in rise of kingdoms are arc of osiris which you can see here um this game mode puts you and another alliance up against each other for an hour and as you can see some of the rewards are extremely good for doing well in this game mode if your individual scores over 10,000, you can get 10 universal legendary commander sculptures for free multiple times per month and these are the most rare thing that will come along in rise of kingdoms another very important event for legendary commander sculptures is called the Korok ceremony this comes around I think once every month or every other month and it will give you up to I think 12 or 13 legendary commander sculptures for free just by completing it on top of that there is a bunch of events that are really important like Soroli crisis Ian's ballads and especially holiday events which come around either every month or every other month so we're talking about Halloween Christmas Valentine's Day the summertime even as an event okay so these holiday events give you a ton of really important stuff especially again legendary commander sculptures finally the sunset canyon is a daily event that you should participate in because a lot of the rewards are very good for getting equipment and equipment materials you get between five and seven attempts every single day to fight a pre-configuration of other players in your kingdom so they basically you set up your five armies and then you auto battle and and this is a very good event that you should be doing every single day if you want to have good equipment on your commanders which we're going to talk about in a little bit okay this part of the video is going to be really important so please if you've been tuning out okay this is when you want to pay attention and this is investing in commanders okay there are a ton of commanders in the game and a lot of them look like they're good and they're not and like I've mentioned previously in the video legendary commander sculptures that are universal that can be used on anybody are extremely rare to come by we've talked about some instances where you can get 10 sculptures 12 sculptures but to max out a commander you need 700 and that's just for one commander so investing in the right commanders is extremely important for your long-term success in rise of kingdoms not only that but you're going to need to use golden stars and these are going to be hard to come by in the early game as well as well as experience so making the right investments is key the first thing that you need to know is that for a majority of commanders probably 90 percent of commanders or more their first skill is the most important skill that you get to five this is called their active skill and these trigger once every between seven and ten turns depending on rage and we won't get into that but this is where a lot of your damage comes from this is where a lot of your buffs come from a lot of your utility and these are almost always important for every single commander that you use when fighting other players so it's important that when you're adding a skill onto a commander that it goes into this first skill first now the reason that I'm mentioning this is because depending on the level of your commander you can actually accidentally put a point into the wrong skill so what do I mean by this well for my Pakal here okay just as an example um right now I have all four of his skills unlocked which is what happens when you get the commander to four stars so when you first get a commander for example you're only going to have their first skill unlocked for example my Edward doesn't have the other skills unlocked only the first one he comes by default that way but because my Pakal is four stars if I go ahead and I add a skill to him there is a 25 percent chance of it landing 
in the first skill because rise of kingdoms does not let you choose which skill that you want to upgrade directly now you do have some ways to influence um which which skills you you put into so for example again if we go back to my edward if i add a skill to him right now the only skill it can go in is the first one because the other ones aren't even unlocked yet for my pakal that's not the case i've unlocked all of them so when i add a skill it could go into any of them one of the things you can do if you've gotten your commander to four stars but you didn't finish that first skill is use what's called the skill lock feature it's this lock right Right here you click that and you can drag this all the way down and hit save you'll see the lock next to each of these skills here um that's how you know that this is the only skill that could possibly be upgraded if you add a skill to that commander now this feature is limited okay let's say i really wanted that third skill there is no way to guarantee that i get points in this uh in this third skill unless i've already maxed out the first two so for example even if i lock it here at three right now there is a 33 percent chance of it going into the one that i want so it's, again it's important to use this feature uh in a way that maximizes your benefit and that almost always means locking the first skill until it's at five now before we talk about legendary commanders and which ones you should be focusing on which by the way is a whole separate video and i've covered that many times on the channel we first have to talk about epic commanders okay because these are going to be the ones that are going to be the most available in the early game and also are obviously more powerful than the blues and the greens now even as epic commanders a lot of these aren't that good uh, there's only a few that remain relevant into the late game so to keep things simple i'm going to give you guys an order with which i think you should invest in these epic commanders in the early game because a lot of people forget that even epic commanders are kind of hard to upgrade when you first start playing the first commander i would recommend investing in is Boudica, which again is a little bit counterintuitive to what i mentioned earlier about joan of arc but don't worry i'll explain it the reason you want to focus on Boudica first and in specific you want to actually get her first two skills to five you can sort of ignore the last two for a while you don't really need them the most important part is that the second skill gives you a 25 percent bonus damage to barbarians and 20 percent bonus experience this is in the early game very good for leveling up all of your other commanders which is why you want to focus on her first and then you want to move on to Joan of Arc now again if you started as France you're already going to be getting sculptures of her for free but it's important in the early game to get her first two skills to five okay we've already talked about this but the second skill is what's going to help you gather a ton and then these last two skills they're good but you can ignore them in the early game for now after Joan you're going to want to get Matilda of Flanders again to that five five one one point and you're going to hear that terminology used a lot people are going to say five five one one or they're going to say five 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 one and they're just referencing the number of skill points in the left to right order okay then I would recommend getting Queen Tamar of Georgia also to five five one one this is the same reason as Joan the same reason as Matilda Queen Tamar is going to help you gather a lot more resources and again in the early game these are going to be the commanders that you want to focus on for that reason once you've done that for those four commanders I'm going to actually recommend you go back to Matilda and expertise her what I mean by this is just put all of your universal epic commander sculptures into just Matilda until you unlock her expertise and the reason for this is the same reason that I mentioned investing in Constance earlier and it's because you gain the additional 10 percent resources and this does stack with Constance so once you've maxed out Matilda and Constance you now get 20 percent bonus resources which is super good for gathering at your Alliance resource pit once you've expertise Matilda I would recommend expertising Sun Tzu this is going to be your first PvP commander he's got a very good active skill tons of damage tons of skill damage he's going to be very good for completing missions in expedition because he's so powerful he has AoE which is area of effect damage which means he hits multiple targets at the same time he is uh, probably the most powerful epic commander in the entire game for PvP so you want to expertise him next now if you picked France you've probably gotten a ton more skills on Joan of Arc by now but after Sun Tzu I would recommend expertising Joan of Arc then I would expertise Bjorn because he's extremely powerful as well then I would recommend expertising Imhotep uh, that is the Egypt commander that isn't in the game yet but he seems to be very promising and after he's expertised I would recommend expertising Bybars also for the high damage 
area of effect after that it doesn't really matter you're gonna get these over time from silver and gold keys anyway one thing I'll note is that you should not use universal sculptures on Lohar despite me talking about how important his third skill is you can get these sculptures for free by participating in the Lohar event that comes around periodically so make sure that you level him up in that way instead of using universals next let's talk about the order that I think you should invest in legendary commanders and again I have entire videos about this but in the early game I think you should get Richard the first from the wheel of fortune he comes around relatively early you want to get his first skill to five so enough Richard sculptures to get this first skill to five you can leave the rest at one if you want to then I would recommend expertising Yi Song A meaning you get 700 sculptures put all of them into Yi Song A you get a very powerful five target circular AOE he's extremely good still used in the very late game then I would recommend expertising Alexander the Great he is another commander that comes around relatively early on a couple of months into the game and he stays very powerful and relevant for a very long time what I just told you is over 1400 sculptures worth of investment so that is more than enough to get you started for a very long time but a couple of commanders to also note are Saladin he comes around from the mightiest governor you might want to unlock him if you can especially if you're a spender uh same thing with Constantine as well he would be somebody you would stop at 5511 but not that important especially for free-to-play players these days finally I want to talk about some commanders you should avoid okay this is like the biggest pitfall of early game rise of kingdoms is people unlock for example Cao Cao from the gold keys and they start putting universal sculptures into him because he's the first legendary that they get this is a huge mistake okay you do not want to put any universal commander sculptures into any of the legendary commanders that you can get from the gold keys so that includes all of these commanders here as well as whatever commander is coming from Egypt okay again do not I can't emphasize this enough put any universal legendary commander sculptures into any of the commanders that you see here okay Caesar Freddy Tauto Martel El Cid none of the gatherers Mehmed Mulan Ragnar you're gonna get them for free over time and you will probably use some of them and some of them are usable for a while like Charles Martel because you get them for free slowly over time you don't want to waste universal sculptures on them other commanders you definitely want to avoid in the early game are going to be Edward of Woodstock as well as Genghis Khan these are commanders that come into the game they look new and exciting but they do not age well they are very bad in the late game and are huge wastes of legendary commander sculptures so definitely avoid that also I do want to mention Charlemagne he's another one of the worst commanders in the entire game avoid him as well generally as a rule of thumb it's important to start to invest in commanders in pairs right so we get Richard then we get YSG this is a well-known combination used for killing barbarians in the late game when barbarians get really really strong furthermore once you get Alexander you can use Alexander and Isong A for high damage in PvP scenarios especially in KvK2 but more than that into the late game you want to focus on commanders of the same troop type so using commanders like Alexander the Great with Guan Yu they're both infantry commanders they both deal a lot of damage there's a ton of synergy because they're both infantry commanders so for you as a player I want you guys to consider which troop type you want to focus on do you want to do infantry do you want to do cavalry do you want to do archers right there's a lot to pick from in this game and by focusing on just one thing you're sort of getting the most amount of value out of it because again they come in pairs and you have to remember you have to put equipment on these commanders too and equipment has a specific value that is most beneficial for a particular troop type so what I recommended before is for all players Richard YSG Alex I think all players should expertise them but moving on from that point then you can decide where you want to specialize and because two of those three commanders are infantry most new players and free-to-play players should probably focus infantry but you can easily make the argument for cavalry as well archers are maybe a little bit more late game and pay to win focus but we won't get into that now next we're going to talk briefly about equipment because this is again another entire topic that people have made tons of videos about and it's very complex but I just want to give you guys a quick breakdown of sort of the progression for which pieces of equipment you should focus on depending on which troop type you are focusing on so I'm going to give credit really quick to wick gaming he's another content creator here on YouTube credit to him for these images and these builds but this is extremely important for new players to focus on okay so first we're going to talk about archers this is sort of the beginner archer set that you should focus on okay um if you don't have the purple boots you can do just the plain gray white boots that's fine this is the best build again that's what we're showing the best build for archers 
as a beginner or new player then you want to progress to the entire epic set then you want to replace two key components of the epic set and then you want to go full golden look here 1400 days i want you guys to focus on how long that is in years okay this is why i want to set this into your perspective that this is not something you need to focus on right now um and that's why we're talking about progression right yes this is the best you could do but this is years away so focus on this then progress to here then here then here now we can talk about the same thing for cavalry okay this is your starter equipment build for cavalry then you want to focus on a couple of key epic pieces then you want to replace some of those epic pieces with legendary and then this is the late game end game best possible cavalry set with special talents finally this is for infantry okay this is the beginner infantry set focus on this if you're a new infantry player then you want to replace most of it with the purple epic gear then you replace the helmet and the chest with some legendary gear and then finally in the late game you have a full set of golden legendary equipment all with the special talent if this section did not make sense to you right now because you're brand new to the game you will eventually want to come back and revisit some of the things we talked about here next I want to talk about where you should spend your gems okay gems are the premium currency here in rise of kingdoms they're very rare to get as a free to play player and of course you could just buy more if you wanted to but as you get gems for free over time where should you spend them as a free to play player who won't have a lot of them where do you get the most value for your gem spend well the first thing to know is that there is an event that comes around called more than gems okay and in that event you actually gain bonus rewards for spending your gems no matter what you spend them on so it's important as a free-to-play player to save your gems or your gems until the more than gems event comes around and then you want to spend all of those gems on the things that you need for your account during that time frame because you just get more value out of them it's free value the first place that you want to put your gems into is probably vip not only because you want vip 6 but also vip 10 is a crucial milestone for your account the reason for that is because this is when you get one legendary commander sculpture every single day guaranteed that is huge and of course this does mean that it still will take a long time to expertise a commander but still the fact that it's guaranteed is so game changing so getting vip 10 first is a very important part of this uh of this early game equation you can use your gems directly as a one-to-one -one trade for vip points a thousand gems is a thousand vip points now the other place that you might want to spend a lot of gems is on specific wheels of fortune now these events pretty much never line up with the more than gems event so this is sort of an exception to that rule but some commanders in the game you can only get from what's called the wheel of fortune Richard the first is the first wheel of fortune commander that you're going to be exposed to luckily Isong Ye is also a wheel of fortune commander and so is Alexander the Great so you will get familiar with this event but essentially what this means is that you will spend some number of gems to spin the wheel of fortune and you'll get some heads of the commander that's what people call them essentially just sculptures that you use to increase the the skills on that commander some other things to consider during the more than gems event are going to be purchasing books of the covenant and master's blueprints these we've already talked about books and the arrows you get them for free by playing the game but you need so many books of the covenant to get city hall 25 that a lot of players end up just buying them for gems during the more than gems event okay so that's something that you can do and you will need these to get to the end game but also master's blueprints you need these to upgrade any building from 24 to 25 and the only way to get them is with gems so you might as well buy these during the more than gems event because you will need them later down the line you'll need at least seven or eight of them in order to get your city hall to 25 so keep that in mind some places where you should never spend your gems are in the shop here for resources or for speed ups for boosts this stuff you never ever want to spend gems here you also never really want to spend your gems in the vip shop there's some very small exceptions to this during the more than gems event for the most part you want to avoid that and also the courier station she's not in my city now but you want to avoid spending your gems with the mysterious merchant all the time you just never want to do that since we're on the topic of best practices when spending gems let's talk about some other best practices as you're progressing your account these are going to be some very valuable tips for getting some really nice rewards the first tip is going to be gathering runes runes are dropped at holy sites and these holy sites every single day 
twice a day once at reset and once halfway through will spawn what's called guardians okay and when you defeat a guardian not only do you get a ton of experience for your commanders so you should do this as a group every single day but they will drop a rune and these runes are random okay and you can see here that these runes give you some buffs sometimes if your alliance or kingdom is very nice they will actually put markers down for important buffs that you can find from these runes because again they are random every day sometimes you don't need anything that uh, that drops but for the early game 10 percent gathering speed is very very good 10 percent training speed is very very good you're also going to see some really important uh buffs for building speed and research speed and some of your biggest researches you want to save until you get the best possible rune because it's going to save a ton of time guys keep in mind in the late game there are particular researches like unlocking your tier five units that will take over 70 days or some researches take over a hundred days of time okay so reducing that by 10 percent is huge especially when it's absolutely free all you have to do is wait until that specific uh, specific rune does end up dropping another way to further reduce the building and research times for you for free is by having a title that is given to you by the king of your kingdom now this only is relevant after you've taken the lost temple which is the center of your home kingdom map okay so if you guys don't have titles in your kingdom right now it's because your kingdom is not old enough now some of these titles are extremely useful look at this prime minister gets 15 percent resource production and 10 percent building speed imagine if you have a, a building that takes 30 days to upgrade you reduce that by 10 percent just by having the title another very important one is architect and scientist these are extremely useful as well as a uh, duke which gives you 10 percent training speed now there's only one of these titles per kingdom okay so only one person can hold that title at that time so right now you can see who the queen is the prime minister and all those things but even though there's only one of those titles it's often passed around to people who need it at that time so for example if you're upgrading a particular building then you can ask for the architect title during that time and hopefully you've gathered a building rune as well and then you can start the building upgrade with the architect title and then once somebody else is granted the architect title you've already benefited from the reduced building time it's not like losing the title will increase the amount of time it's going to take no once you start that building upgrade the time that it takes is locked in place another best practice is do not let your hospital overflow what that means is that when your city gets attacked or when you fight barbarians or you fight other players some of those units are going to be injured they're going to be called severely wounded units okay and severely wounded units cannot be used in battle until they're healed at the hospital but what you can see here is that you have a particular hospital capacity okay for me there's no wounded units in my hospital my severely wounded capacity is 390,000 right now which means that I can hold up to 390,000 units in my hospital regardless of if they're tier one or tier five units and then after that once my hospital is full any unit that would be severely wounded ends up dying because they have no hospital to go to the hospital is full and it's important to know that it is cheaper and faster to heal a unit than it is to train a new version of that unit so you never want to get dead units if you can help it now some instances like joining rallies and joining garrisons you will guaranteed get some dead units but if all you're doing is open field fighting always keep an eye on how full your hospital is because you never want it to overflow which is the reason why you never want your city to get attacked while you're offline in the same vein as that you should not be fighting in the early game okay especially if you're a free-to-play player there's no point in fighting other players in your home kingdom because all that's going to do is slow down your progress for your account because now you're spending valuable resources uh on your hospital which you didn't need to do and also the other person has to do the same so the entire kingdom actually is uh, stunted in their growth by having civil wars the final best practice that i want to mention is doing your dailies okay obviously there's going to be main quests that you have to do which you obviously should focus on but there's also daily quests and these daily quests you should do every single day when you log in okay uh, and the reason for that is simple you're gonna get a ton of really good stuff that is super valuable you're gonna get a ton of resources you're gonna get speed ups you're also gonna get equipment material chests here which is super super good especially in the later game and once you've completed all these you get gems for free which you're going to need gold keys crystal keys uh relic coins magic chest 
there's tons of stuff that you need here you also get universal epic commander sculptures which you're definitely going to need in the early game so make sure you're doing these every single day now i do want to point out that these rewards get better as your city hall gets higher and as your kingdom progresses so if you don't get the same rewards as you see for me it's because you're a lower level and your kingdom is younger now since we're talking about best practices let's talk about some best practices when it comes to buying things in the game rise of kingdoms is a free to play game but there are tons of ways to spend money in the game and many of you probably just shouldn't okay it's free to play just enjoy the game for free and we'll talk about in a little bit some of the expectations that you should have as a free to play player but some of you guys will want to spend money and you may be tempted by Minamoto okay the game likes to push Minamoto if you're going to spend money in the game where should you spend it now again I actually made a full guide talking about this so if you want to go really in depth okay there's a lot to spend money on go ahead and check out that guide but just on a quick note here the best places to spend money in rise of kingdoms if you're only going to spend just a couple of dollars are going to be the 30 day gem supply the growth fund because this gives you a ton of gems when you hit city hall 25 the lucerne scrolls which is basically the battle pass here in rise of kingdoms you're going to get a ton of goodies from this five dollar battle pass for completing the challenges which are things that you'll probably just be doing anyway by playing the game you also might want to consider buying enough vip bundles to get Minamoto to 5511 we've talked about this configuration before the reason that Minamoto at 5511 is so good is because you get to skip this third skill which is not good for PvP and unfortunately you won't get the fourth skill all the way up to five but for only I think it's 30 US dollars you can get a pretty decent early game commander and then later in the game much later during season of conquest uh, you will actually be able to unlock another special buff for Minamoto that keeps him sort of relevant he's very good in the early game in the late game he he falls off in kvk two and three but then in season of conquest he gets a little bit of a, bu a buff in in relevance he's not meta but he's definitely decent beyond that there's the king's coronation bundle which generally gives you decent value for a ton of stuff you can only buy this bundle once whereas others you can buy multiple times and then there are holiday bundles for halloween and christmas and valentine's day and those things typically give you a lot of good value when you spend there as well and finally it should be noted that and you really should buy these bundles during an event called recharge rewards okay these events typically come around the same time as holiday events uh and the benefit is that when you make purchases every single day you gain bonus rewards okay so you it's the same value the same purchase but you just get more stuff for it so if you're gonna spend in the game i would wait until the recharge rewards event uh, comes around now on the topic of making purchases what i want to talk about is sort of your expectations as a free-to-play player if you just started playing rise of kingdoms and you're enjoying it what can you expect later down the line if you continue to not spend money well first of all you still can enjoy the game a ton okay the game is built on the community and joining an active alliance and having fun fighting other players okay and there are ways that you can do that as a free-to-play player and if you start with this guide uh there's a good chance that you'll be ahead of the curve for performing well in the late game but a lot of the biggest battles in the game are going to come in the form of rallies versus garrisons what that means is that as alliances progress across kvk maps you can see there's different colors this is different alliance territory and if one alliance wants to take over a territory that another alliance already has specifically in the middle of the map which is the whole point of the game mode you're going to have to destroy the other alliances crusader flags now you can reinforce these flags and you can also rally the enemy flags with your commanders as a free-to-play player you should not expect to lead the rallies and lead the garrisons okay it's just you need to have the best equipment the best commanders max level everything max technology tier five units you really need to be the best of the best players to get the best results for your alliance and for your kingdom's performance so as a free-to-play player what you can do is reinforce okay I can reinforce this Crusader flag with my troops it doesn't matter what commanders I have all that matters is my troops are there okay and during these rally versus garrison fights the only thing that matters in those fights is the player that leads the rally and leads the garrison which means as a free-to-play player even though you might not have the best commanders or the best equipment or whatever the case is you still contribute and are extremely vital to the performance of your kingdom and your alliance just by being present being online participating in those fights and beyond that it's fun to make progress in this game it's fun to build up your city and build up your army and collect the different commanders 
put a bunch of cool equipment on them and just sort of be a part of the game and a part of the community that is a lot of fun of rise of kingdoms and as a free to play player sure it's going to take you a lot longer to get those upgrades but it's going to feel a lot more rewarding when you do so if you're a free to play player will you be the strongest player in your kingdom no definitely not there's almost no possible way that that could be the case but you still have a meaningful contribution that you can make to your kingdom so don't get discouraged now i also want to touch on whether or not you should start over okay because we've talked for a long time in this video about the best practices for a new player in rise of kingdoms and you might be sitting there thinking wow i didn't pick the right server i didn't pick the right civilization i've invested in julius caesar and he said not to okay you probably should not start over okay unless your account is like less than a week old or something like that it's probably easier and faster to fix your account over time than it is to completely start over by all means if you want to start over you can there are groups of people who start over periodically for fun called jumper groups you can find these groups in my discord down below and also they sometimes promote in comments and stuff like that but for the most part you probably shouldn't restart okay the reason for that is because a lot of the mistakes that you may have made are easily fixed okay if you pick the wrong civilization great news you can change civilizations for free okay even if you've used the free civilization change that you get um you can just buy another one from the alliance shop if there is one available okay you can get them for free same thing with the commanders okay it does maybe it sucks that you put some universal sculptures into a commander like Tao Tao or Martel that you don't necessarily need to put uh, universals into but you know that's a lesson learned and moving forward it's better to just put the commander sculptures in the right place than it is to completely start over your entire account because then you're just losing progress another thing you should do if you're considering restarting is start a farm account okay we've talked about this earlier in the video but if you start a farm account you you can actually do everything right now that you know the best things to do and then you can decide in like a month if you know maybe your farm account is just performing better than your main account well then that's your new main account and there you go okay this video has been way longer than I thought it would be but hopefully you guys found this super useful if you're a brand new player just joining rise of kingdoms as I mentioned before there are a ton of guides on my YouTube channel and other youtubers across the platform make a ton of really good content for rise of kingdoms so make sure you subscribe to my channel and click the bell to be notified notified the next time that I upload a rise of kingdoms guide comment down below any questions you have that I didn't answer in this video after you've checked to see if I've already made a video about it drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps this video get out into the YouTube algorithm so other new players might actually see it and finally you can join my discord in the link down below and that's a place where you can interact with me and other rise of kingdoms players if you're looking for tips and advice with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace